security thing. So I say, yo, what are you getting this for? <laughs> and it said butt plugs. And he was like, yo, yo, can I do my shopping by myself? I said, yeah. yeah. This rapper and him, they all in the room together. You know, it's Sarah, the girl, Puff, and, and this dude, this rapper. So the ongoing scrutiny directed towards Diddy has surfaced amidst allegations of pervasive influence and disturbing behavior within his social circle. Rumors suggest Diddy's involvement in incidents of sexual harassment targeting emerging rappers, alongside purported engagement in unsettling activities during after parties. It seems like there are some very shocking reasons as to why male rappers are terrified of Diddy's after parties. Guys don't put those pills that they get to the girls in the champagne bottles because they popping them in front of them. And they trying to keep their eyes on because they don't want to get no kind of drugs put in their system. But what they don't understand is in the orange juice and it's in the cranberry juice. Among the accounts, prominent figures such as Puff Daddy and Felix, renowned house music producers, have stepped forward with unsettling testimonies. Reports describe instances of individuals being uncomfortably coerced, exemplified by suggestive interactions like spooning between Diddy and Felix, indicative of an environment fraught with questionable conduct. These incidents, recounted by those who claim to have witnessed them, cast a shadow over Diddy's reputation, challenging the perception of his public persona. How do you feel about these lawsuits accusing Diddy of abuse? What do you think about that? You knowing Diddy, do you think he's capable of doing that, man? Do I think, yeah. <laughs> There's no, every man possibly is capable. I do, you know, a man is so strong enough. We can just walk away. You don't, you, you can, you can do, it's so many different things that you can do other than get upset, put your hands on a woman. But that comes from a man who's not quite a, f a grown man. One such individual, Josh Ostrovsky, widely known as the Fat Jew across social media platforms, has shared his own disturbing encounter involving Diddy and his associates. Ostrovsky, a social media influencer and entrepreneur, recounts a disconcerting experience at a party hosted on Star Island, coincidentally located near Diddy's private residence. Amidst an ambiance of opulence and exclusivity, Ostrovsky observed a disproportionate ratio of female attendees, raising suspicions regarding the nature of the event. Criticism and skepticism have followed those who have come forward with allegations against Diddy, with Ostrovsky facing backlash for his disclosures. The dichotomy between Diddy's perceived public image and the unsettling accounts emerging from within his social circle has ignited a contentious discourse. After Josh left the main area of the mansion to search for the bathroom, he found himself wandering through a maze of corridors. Each room he stumbled upon seemed devoid of the necessary facilities, raising suspicion. Furthermore, he encountered groups of men lounging in a peculiar manner, reminiscent of Romanesque scenes, which struck him as unusual. The absence of women in these rooms, combined with the seemingly intimate posture of the men, hinted at a potentially uncomfortable situation, bordering on the surreal. This unsettling discovery led Josh to question the authenticity of Diddy's motives in hosting these parties. Rather than simply providing an atmosphere for socializing, Josh insinuated that Diddy may have been orchestrating a facade to conceal darker activities. He described the lingering unease he felt after leaving these gatherings, suggesting a pervasive atmosphere of anxiety among attendees. In another instance involving Fabulous, a notable rapper, a sense of melancholy seemed to overshadow the atmosphere. Despite being surrounded by the glamour of celebrity-filled parties, Fabulous appeared distant and introspective. His subdued demeanor hinted at underlying tensions, possibly stemming from personal or professional conflicts with Diddy. During a conversation between Diddy and Fabulous, the contrast between their priorities became evident. While Diddy probed about Fabulous's desires and ambitions, Fabulous emphasized the importance of positive vibes and family connections over material aspirations. For years, there have been rumblings in the entertainment world about some strange happenings at Diddy's exclusive gatherings. The latest to shed light on this is rapper 50 Cent. During his final lap tour, a video surfaced online where he talked about why he avoids Diddy's parties. In the clip, 50 Cent tells the crowd, that's why I don't be going to them puffy parties. Uh-uh, 
dude hugs you from the front and the back at the same time? What's up with that? He explained that he feels uneasy and somewhat emasculated in such situations. If that's your thing, it's cool. Everyone's got their preferences. But for me, it's just not my scene. It's awkward. I'd feel more at home in the ladies' room when that stuff's happening. This isn't the first time 50 Cent has hinted at these uncomfortable encounters at Diddy's parties. Earlier, he posted a viral photo of Lil Baby being hugged from both ends by two men at Michael Rubin's all-white party, linking it to Diddy. In response, Diddy hasn't directly addressed 50 Cent's comments, but in a previous interview, he mentioned that he has no ill feelings towards 50 Cent. He even suggested that 50 Cent actually admires him. It's concerning that despite all the attention and criticism, Diddy doesn't seem bothered. Some fans still ridicule him for his actions, like wearing a wig and other eccentric clothing. Even 50 Cent took a jab at him on Instagram, calling him out for it. This isn't the first time 50 Cent has publicly criticized Diddy. He's hinted at Diddy's behavior before, suggesting he's seen things that imply Diddy might be hiding something. For instance, when 50 Cent posted a photo of Diddy and Rick Ross on stage, he seemed to imply there was more to their relationship than what was being shown publicly. There have been instances where Diddy's actions, like kissing a man's neck, have raised eyebrows. Another instance was when Diddy was photographed wearing a pink shirt while hugging another man in pink. 50 Cent captioned the photo with a hint of suspicion, suggesting that something didn't seem right. According to 50 Cent, Diddy has a tendency to do things that come off as odd or cringeworthy. He seems unaware of how his actions might be perceived, often behaving in a way that some might describe as fruity. In 2009, as reported by HipHopDX.com, Exhibit shared a peculiar incident that took place at a New Year's bash in Miami, where he was hanging out with Diddy and Carrie Reen superhead Steffens. During an interview on Sirius Satellite's Foxhole radio show, Exhibit began recounting the strange tale. He said, Puffy pulls me aside and says, do you know about the girl you're with? I said, yeah, everyone knows. He goes, that's the devil, man. I asked, uh, what do you mean she's the devil? After confronting Superhead about an incident that Diddy described, which is too much for StyleAmerican.com, the video vixen reportedly laughed and said she would explain later. I guess he got some prior incident with her that he don't want nobody to know about, added Exhibit. Later, upon Diddy's invitation, Exhibit found himself at a club with Diddy and Steffens, where things took an unexpected turn. We get to this club and we walk in the back way. It's the VIP lounge, ain't nobody in there. The club is going, it's jumping, and I'm sitting there with Superhead, said X. So then, Diddy is doing his business. We go down and get a drink. We sitting there bobbing to the music, and then Superhead point over to the corner. There's two dudes kissing, I'm like, what the heck is this? Then she point in another direction and there's another dude over there butt naked dancing. Surprised by what he saw, Exhibit decided to leave without informing Diddy. We take off, we leave the club directly. I didn't say peace to nobody. It was suspect, he said. Reflecting on the incident, Exhibit commented, you can chalk it up to being in Miami or whatever, but I've been in a bunch of clubs. I ain't never mistakenly stepped into a club with that kind of activity. There it is. In 2012, Diddy found himself in an awkward situation when a recording from his album release party surfaced. In the video, Diddy jokingly discussed sharing a bed with a young usher. These encounters, he clarified, were entirely platonic as Diddy was older and Usher was only 10 at the time. Amid laughter from Kevin Hart and a puzzled look from Usher, Diddy tried to explain, saying, That's my brother right here. From day one, we used to wake up and... I mean, damn, pause, but, like, check this out. He then reminisced about their childhood, claiming they used to argue over breakfast cereal, particularly frosted flax, before the concept of a... pause was introduced. The conversation took an uncomfortable turn, prompting Kevin Hart to intervene, calling out the absurdity of the situation. Yo, what the heck did Puff just say? Hart exclaimed. Nobody's gonna acknowledge this. Puff just said we used to wrestle over the frosted flakes, me. And we're streaming live. That was stupid. Listen, that was crazy. The incident highlighted a moment of awkwardness for Diddy, 
prompting reactions from both his friends and the public. In recent years, Diddy, the American singer-artist, has faced a series of legal challenges and lawsuits, according to reports from Rolling Stone. These legal issues have encompassed allegations ranging from violence and abuse to sexual assault. However, even before these legal troubles arose, Diddy had drawn criticism from fans due to his purported relationship with Usher. Before Usher rose to fame, he was mentored by Diddy, as many are aware. Usher began living with Diddy at the age of 14, and he later disclosed some of the unconventional experiences he had while under Diddy's mentorship that may not have been suitable for someone of his age. During an appearance on The Howard Stern Show some years back, Usher discussed his time at Puffy Flavor Camp and acknowledged witnessing a lifestyle that was quite unconventional, saying, What I did say is that there were very curious things taking place and I didn't necessarily understand it. When asked if he would consider sending his own children to a similar environment, Usher promptly responded with a firm, hell no. This statement led some fans to speculate about potential abuse, although Usher himself has never made such allegations. The speculation intensified after Diddy inadvertently revealed that he had allegedly shared a bed with Usher when the latter was still a teenager, as reported by sources like YouTube and The Things. Former bad boy rapper Mark Curry, known for his 2009 expose on Sean Diddy Combs titled Dancing with the Devil, recently shared significant insights on the Art of Dialogue YouTube channel. While Curry's book, which accused Combs of exploitative business practices, initially garnered limited attention, recent legal challenges against Combs have brought it back into focus. In YouTube clips, Curry alleges several troubling incidents involving Combs. He claims Combs was involved in a physical altercation with his ex-girlfriend Kim Porter on a yacht, resulting in her broken nose. Additionally, Curry asserts that Combs once threw a chair at a producer after overhearing a conversation with Porter on a tapped phone line. Shockingly, Curry also alleges witnessing Combs spiking women's drinks in clubs, a disturbing accusation, especially considering Curry's implication that he continued to associate with Combs despite witnessing such behavior. Curry now joins former bodyguards Gene Deal and Roger Bonds, who have also spoken out about their experiences with Combs following the lawsuits. While these accounts may further tarnish Diddy's reputation, they also raise questions about why individuals like Curry maintained ties with him after the initial allegations surfaced. This isn't the first time criticism has been directed at Combs' character. In 2019, former bad boy artist Mace criticized Combs for alleged unethical business practices. Moreover, accusations about Combs' character extend beyond business, with hints from his ex-girlfriends Misa Hilton and Gina Huing about concerning behavior. The recent wave of accusations against Combs occurs amidst a broader societal conversation about enabling high-profile individuals facing allegations of misconduct. Examples like R. Kelly and Africa Bambata demonstrate how a network of enablers can perpetuate such behavior. In Diddy's case, individuals around him are now admitting to having knowledge of his conduct, shedding light on the complexities of enabling in such situations. Cassie's lawsuit further intensified scrutiny on Combs, with allegations of physical abuse. Bonds, once Diddy's security guard, confirmed Cassie's allegations and hinted at a pattern of violence before deactivating his Instagram temporarily. Upon his return, Bonds teased a project titled Two Faces and criticized Combs for not supporting his incarcerated son. Curry's book Dancing with the Devil portrays Combs as an exploitative businessman who allegedly left Curry in dire financial straits. However, Curry's recent revelations about Combs' alleged abuse and drugging of women are not included in the book. Eugene Big Jean Deal, another former security guard for Diddy, has been vocal about Combs' behavior over the years. Despite his exposés accusing Combs of assaulting Kim Porter and Misa Hilton, Deal's continued association with Diddy raises questions. Deal has hinted at an upcoming book about his time with the label, facing challenges promoting it due to potential repercussions from his former client. The persistent question remains, why did Deal and others remain in Combs' circle, despite their apparent disdain and accumulation of damning stories? For over three decades, Diddy has portrayed himself as a carefree figure, enjoying the Hamptons lifestyle. However, 
Beneath this facade, there have been persistent concerns regarding his involvement with Death Row City College Steve Stout and a history of exploiting artists, hinting at a darker side to his persona. Despite these issues, Diddy's music career continued to thrive, overshadowing claims of violence that seemed to go unnoticed by those in his inner circle, including security guards, assistants, secretaries, and close friends. Now, as former associates come forward with revelations online, their stories are widely shared across various platforms, including blogs and gossip forums. Amidst this unfolding drama, it's important to acknowledge that Diddy's empire is facing scrutiny, primarily due to the bravery of women who have spoken out about their traumatic experiences. The focus should be on their courage rather than on individuals who turned a blind eye for years. These enablers, despite now sharing their accounts, do not deserve hero status. The spotlight rightly belongs to those who have chosen to speak up against alleged violence and injustice. Recent allegations have also sparked speculation about Diddy's personal life, particularly regarding his sexuality. Deal cited instances where he allegedly witnessed the rapper purchasing butt plugs or heading to what seemed to be a gay hotspot. I knew I should wait outside of Turkish baths for him. You know what they do in Turkish baths? I saw this dude pick up butt plugs. This was the first time I was seeing some shot like that. That's where a lot of gay men meet, and they all take hot baths together. To each his own though, right? However, amidst the ongoing sexual assault lawsuits against him, Diddy recently experienced a legal victory. This victory stemmed from a successful appeal against his most recent accuser, who had sought to remain anonymous in court. The accuser, previously known as Jane Doe, was compelled by the court to reveal her identity following Diddy's insistence. According to court documents obtained by TMZ, the judge determined that Jane Doe lacked sufficient grounds to justify keeping her identity confidential. The case revolves around the fourth and latest lawsuit filed against the music mogul on December 6th. In this lawsuit, Jane Doe alleged that Diddy, along with his longtime associate Harve Pierre and an unidentified man, sexually assaulted her in New York in 2003 when she was a 17-year-old high school student Initially, Diddy sought to dismiss Jane Doe's request for anonymity, while she argued that he was attempting to publicly discredit her by pushing for her identity to be revealed. She also claimed to be the victim of separate wrongdoings that occurred nearly two decades after the events central to this case. Ultimately, the court sided with Diddy in this particular legal dispute. In February, producer Rodney Lilrod Jones filed a significant lawsuit against Sean Diddy Combs accusing the media mogul of sexual harassment and threats over a period of more than a year. Jones also alleges that Diddy obtained footage showing him and several associates engaging in illicit behavior and alleged sexual assault. In the federal lawsuit seeking $30 million, Jones named several prominent figures in the entertainment industry. However, only Diddy's son, Justin Dior Combs, Universal Music Group, Chief Executive Lucian Charles Grange, former Modown Records chief executive Ethiopia Habtamarium, Chalice Recording Studios, Diddy's chief of staff Christina K.K. Corum, Love Records, and Combs Enterprises are listed as defendants. Jones claims that this network of involvement constitutes a violation of the racketeer, influenced and corrupt organizations act, RICO. Jones, a Chicago-born producer who worked on nine songs for Diddy's 2023 album, The Love Album Off The Grid, filed the lawsuit in U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York. In the 75-page complaint, Jones's attorney Tyrone A. Blackburn asserts that Jones's life has been severely impacted since he agreed to produce the album in August 2022. Jones alleges that he was under an implied work-for-hire agreement with Combs and spent extended periods living with the recording giant in various locations, including Los Angeles, New York City, Miami, and on a yacht rented by Combs in the U.S. Virgin Islands. The complaint states that during his time with Combs, Jones witnessed and experienced numerous incidents that went beyond his role as a producer on the album. It alleges that Combs required Jones to constantly record him and that Jones was subjected to unsolicited and unauthorized groping and touching of his anus by Combs. Jones expressed his discomfort with Combs' behavior to Diddy's chief of staff, who allegedly dismissed his concerns with the response, you know, Sean will be Sean. Blackburn likened Coram to Ghislaine Maxwell, associating her with Jeffrey Epstein. 
In his complaint filed in the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York, Jones detailed a series of disturbing encounters. He described his experience producing tracks for Diddy's The Love Album Off the Grid, a collaboration that purportedly turned into a nightmare. According to Jones, his association with Combs led to months of residing in various properties owned by the media mogul, where he claims to have been subjected to unwelcome advances and harassment. Said Jones paints a picture of an environment where he felt pressured and uncomfortable, alleging instances of unwanted touching and groping by Diddy. Despite voicing his discomfort, Jones contends that his complaints fell on deaf ears, with Diddy's chief of staff allegedly dismissing his concerns with a nonchalant attitude. Moreover, Jones claims that Diddy attempted to coerce him into engaging in sexual activities with others, dangling promises of professional recognition at prestigious award ceremonies as incentive. He also alleges that Diddy possessed incriminating footage of individuals involved in sexual acts at his residences, leading Jones to believe that hidden cameras were deployed throughout these properties. The lawsuit goes beyond accusations of sexual misconduct, delving into allegations of broader illegal activities within Diddy's circle. Jones claims to have amassed substantial evidence, including recordings and footage, documenting drug use, distribution, and the provision of substances to minors and sex workers. Additionally, the complaint mentions the display and distribution of unregistered firearms. During an incident at Chalice Recording Studios in Los Angeles on September 12, 2022, Jones asserted that he was present and alleged that Combs instructed him to falsely inform the police that Combs had no involvement in the shooting. Jones claimed he was coerced into misleading authorities about the circumstances of the shooting, implicating a drive-by assailant. The individual referred to as G, identified as a 30-year-old friend of Justin Combs, was reportedly injured during the incident. Jones maintained that he possesses clothing stained with blood from assisting the victim that day and submitted screenshots depicting the aftermath of the incident, suggesting involvement by either Mr. Combs or J. Combs. In addition to these allegations, Jones accused Coram of directing her staff to procure drugs for Combs and claimed that footage also depicted Christian Combs engaging in drugging and sexual assault. Furthermore, Jones alleged that Combs discussed using his association with Bishop T.D. Jakes to mitigate the negative impact of Cassie Ventura's lawsuit on his public image. Ventura had filed and settled a rape and abuse lawsuit the previous November, which marked the beginning of Combs' decline in reputation. Subsequently, Combs faced additional accusations of sexual assault and resigned from his role as chairman of Revolt TV. Jones, who had previously publicly requested compensation from Combs for his work on an album, accused Love Records, Motown, and UMG of benefiting unjustly at his expense. In response to these allegations, Combs' attorney Sean Hawley vehemently denied Jones's claims, labeling him a liar and accusing him of seeking unwarranted financial gain. Holly asserted that there is substantial evidence refuting Jones's accusations, which they have attempted to share with Jones' attorney to no avail. Holly indicated their intention to address the allegations in court and pursue appropriate action against those making such claims. Recent legal documents obtained by All Hip Hop reveal musician Rodney Jones Jr., known as Lil Rod, has alleged harassment by Diddy against his family. This purported harassment stems from a sexual assault lawsuit Lil Rod filed against Diddy earlier this year. Lil Rod asserts that Diddy has taken extensive measures to suppress his account, including spreading defamatory stories through intermediaries and sending associates to intimidate his daughter, child's mother, and former partners. Moreover, Lil Rod claims Diddy attempted to influence his legal representation in court. It's important to recognize that these allegations against Diddy, including those made by Lil Rod, remain unverified and speculative. Despite ongoing legal proceedings, with the exception of settlements like the one with Cassie, Lil Rod maintains that he and his associates felt threatened and pressured, leading them to file a police report. In addition to this action, Lil Rod has filed complaints with the state bars of California, New Jersey, and New York regarding Sean Combs. Furthermore, Lil Rod reportedly withdrew all charges against Ethiopia Habtamariam, former CEO of Motown, as part of an agreement reached on March 21st. Similarly, he dismissed accusations against Chalice Recording Studio without prejudice. 
leaving open the possibility of future litigation in Los Angeles. Others involved in the lawsuit against Diddy remain under legal scrutiny. Despite continuous denial of the allegations by Diddy, Lil Rod's attempts to engage with representatives from the music industry and record labels have been unsuccessful. The progression of this legal dispute in the coming weeks may unveil significant developments in this ongoing narrative. But the thing is, these aren't the only allegations against Diddy. In November 2023, singer Cassie, born Cassandra Ventura, brought forth a significant federal lawsuit against her former partner, Sean Diddy Combs, alleging a history of physical and sexual abuse during their relationship. The lawsuit detailed instances of abuse ranging from physical assault to coerced sexual encounters with other individuals and an alleged rape in 2018. Combs swiftly settled the lawsuit within a day of its filing. Subsequently, three more women and one man have filed lawsuits against Combs, citing various forms of abusive behavior, including sexual harassment, rape, non-consensual pornography, and sex trafficking. Combs vehemently denies all allegations, characterizing them as attempts to tarnish his reputation and legacy. Cassie's lawsuit was filed under New York's Adult Survivors Act, which provided a one-year window for victims to sue their alleged sexual abusers, even if the statute of limitations had expired. Cassie asserts that she met Combs in 2005 at the age of 19, and throughout their relationship, he exerted control over nearly every aspect of her life, including her career and access to her medical records. She alleges frequent physical abuse by Combs coupled with the administration of drugs. Additionally, the lawsuit contends that Combs coerced Cassie into engaging in sexual acts with male sex workers in various cities, which he purportedly observed, recorded, and masturbated to. Cassie claims she refrained from seeking police intervention out of fear of further harm from Combs. The lawsuit also recounts an alleged rape incident in 2018, where Cassie states she repeatedly refused Combs' advances to no avail. Cassie's lawsuit references witnesses, including her friend Tiffany Redd, a singer-songwriter who corroborates instances of abuse, notably recounting an incident at Cassie's 29th birthday party in 2015. Redd claims that Combs and his security team expelled Cassie from the event, purportedly to facilitate sexual encounters with other men, a revelation Cassie had shared with Redd at the time. In response to the allegations, Combs's lawyer, Benjamin Braffman, asserted that the lawsuit was replete with unfounded accusations aimed at besmirching Combs's reputation. The lawsuit was settled privately the day after its filing, with details undisclosed. Braffman emphasized that the settlement did not constitute an admission of guilt on Combs' part. Both Cassie and Combs expressed their intent to amicably resolve the matter, with Cassie thanking her supporters and Combs extending his well wishes to Cassie and her family. Four additional individuals have stepped forward with allegations against Diddy, expanding the scope of accusations against him. Following the settlement of previous lawsuits, Liza Gardner filed a lawsuit on November 23rd, just before the expiration of the Adult Survivors Act. Gardner claims that she and a friend encountered Combs and singer-songwriter Aaron Hall at an MCA Records event in 1990 or 1991. They purportedly attended an after-party at Hall's apartment, where Gardner alleges she was coerced into having sexual relations with Combs. She further alleges that Combs assaulted her friend during the same encounter. Gardner describes feeling shocked and traumatized by the incident, detailing a subsequent assault by Hall at her home days later. In a separate complaint filed on the same day, Joey Dickerson Neal alleges that in 1991, she went on a date with Combs, during which she claims she was intentionally drugged and sexually assaulted. Dickerson Neal asserts that Combs recorded the assault and shared the tape with others. Although she did not report the assault immediately, Dickerson Neal states she eventually filed a police report in New York and New Jersey, facing difficulty in finding corroborating witnesses who feared retaliation from Combs. Diddy's spokesperson refuted the allegations made by Gardner and Dickerson Neal, dismissing them as fabricated and accusing them of exploiting legal avenues such as the Adult Survivors Act. Additionally, another woman, referred to as Jane Doe, filed a fourth lawsuit on December 6th, alleging that Combs, along with his longtime associate Harve Pierre and an unidentified third individual, gang-raped her at Combs's Manhattan recording studio in 2003 
when she was 17 years old. The lawsuit alleges that the men transported Doe across state lines, drugged her, and subjected her to violent assault despite her protests. Included in the complaint are several photos purportedly taken on the night of the assault, one showing Doe sitting on Combs' lap. In late November, Diddy made the decision to temporarily step down from his role as chairman of Revolt, the media company he established in 2013. Although he had not been involved in the day-to-day -day operations previously, Revolt emphasized that this move was aimed at maintaining a strong focus on their mission to produce meaningful content for the culture and amplify the voices of black individuals across the United States and the African diaspora. Additionally, Capital Prep Harlem, a charter school founded by Diddy in 2016, announced the termination of its partnership with the music mogul. Meanwhile, according to reports from Variety, a reality show featuring Diddy that was in the early stages of development at Hulu has been canceled in light of the allegations. The proposed show, titled Diddy Plubby 7, was intended to follow Diddy and his family but will no longer move forward. That's all for the video, folks. Thanks for watching.